Good afternoon, uh, everybody, and uh, thank you for the organizing committee for uh, having me uh, in this uh, uh, great sure. event. Uh, the first time for me just to be in this uh, uh, symposium, so I'm very honored. So, um, if I'm right, I have uh, uh, two uh, presentations in a row. And I, I will start with the um, biophysics uh, of uh, PFA, uh, pulse fine ablation, and uh, then I will cover uh, some of the future of PFA uh, uh, technologies. This is my uh, disclosure for relating to my presentations. And uh, uh, let's start with um, a couple of slides summarizing uh, the principles underlying uh, electroporation or, or pulse field ablation, as you will. One of the uh, main principles is just to uh, promote uh, a high you know, uh, energy voltage uh, at the uh, membrane uh, of the uh, atrial or ventricular uh, cell myocardium. And uh, the uh, consequences are just to uh, change uh, uh, the conductivity of the cell membrane. And this is uh, related to uh, the amount of uh, energy that you can create uh, in the uh, setting of uh, our myocardium. And this is really important because uh, we'll see in a moment that uh, the higher is the voltage uh, that you can you know, promote locally and uh, obviously, uh, the higher is the likelihood to uh, promote uh, a tissue, uh, you know, um, image, uh, and uh, obviously the uh, apoptosis of the cells. So, uh, when the electrical passes are delivered, they even a shorter intervals, and you can uh, appreciate from the table just uh, on the slide that you can compare the uh, different uh, effects uh, observing with different uh, pulse durations. Just to, to be practical, if you compare the uh, millisecond, microsecond, and especially nanosecond, you can uh, easily uh, appreciate, especially uh, with the uh, nanosecond, that you can uh, you know, uh, develop membrane voltages across uh, uh, the uh, membrane especially uh, you can go into uh, the inside the cell uh, with, you know, the dominant electrical effect uh, is the internal organelles. Uh, and therefore, uh, if you apply uh, to the nanosecond, uh, you can uh, uh, induce the, the lowest thermal effect. One of the principles of uh, uh, pulse fight ablation as compared to uh, other energy sources is a known thermal uh, effect uh, of uh, the uh, pulse field ablation or electroporation. And uh, if you go down on the cell depth, uh, and if you go to the nanosecond, you know, uh, modality of application, you have uh, the immediate cell death uh, uh, through the uh, apoptosis. So I think it's uh, really important just to uh, highlight that, you know, the holes that you create uh, to the electroporation, uh, that means that you have uh, this pores uh, to the irreversible uh, electroporation. And uh, obviously, uh, you might have uh, uh, different stages of, uh, you know, myocardial injuries in relation uh, to the amount of the electrical field uh, created a, a local uh, atrial or ventricular myocardium. You can uh, uh, easily appreciate that you might have a reversible effect. That means that probably the cell survives. But what we need to aim to is to uh, promote a irreversible electroporation. That means the cell dies through apoptosis, but you can, uh, you know, spare the uh, scaffold of the tissue that remains intact. But if you increase the lytical field, actually you go into the thermal effect. That means not only the cell dies, but also you have denaturation of the protein and the tissue scaffold is damaged. So this is something that uh, we don't want to provide 
uh, to uh, the illicit operation. One nice information is uh, in uh, uh, relation uh, to uh, the voltage threshold. And uh, if you go on the right end of the slide, you uh, appreciate that uh, the voltage is very low for the myocardium. This highlights the specificity of the electric operation for the myocardium as opposed to other tissues like pancreas, liver, endothelial, or the nerve tissue. And that, you know, explains why we can modulate the electric operation uh, without, uh, you know, promoting uh, any injury uh, to uh, the uh, tissue around uh, the heart, like esophagus, bronchi, trachea, and uh, so forth. Another nice uh, feature of the elite operation is the relation between uh, uh, the elite operation and the fiber orientation. And uh, we come back to this uh, concept just in a while uh, to um, highlight uh, why elite operation or pulse feed ablation is really crucial uh, to treat patients with a persistent atrial fibrillation. So in a practical terms, uh, if you applied uh, pulse field ablation uh, in a, a perpendicular fashion uh, to the tissue, you might uh, have uh, the best effect uh, of electro operation on the tissue and therefore a much more, hopefully, durable lesion. This explains why the esophagus is usually spare. Also, in experimental setting, we try just to uh, apply it directly uh, to uh, the esophagus uh, pulse feed ablation without, uh, uh, you know, uh, promoting uh, injury on the esophagus tissue just because the esophagus uh, has both longitudinal and uh, circular muscle fibers, and then this, you know, uh, provides uh, quite a barrier uh, to uh, the elite operation uh, to uh, create a lesion at the esophagus tissue. One concept, uh, I think that, you know, much time has been spent in the past uh, to figure out which is the best modality uh, to apply uh, elite operation. And uh, here you have, uh, you know, an example uh, how uh, currently is applied elite operation uh, to the myocardium tissue, which is a biphasic uh, pulse strain that you know, determines uh, uh, the best effect of electro operation uh, to the atrial tissue. And then also uh, you have the chance to, to have a monopolar or bipolar. It you know, depends on uh, the catheter figuration and you know, uh, different companies uh, can uh, you know, come, up, come up with a different modality. Uh, you, you might have both monopolar or uh, bipolar, but you know, basically uh, every you know, our uh, PFA catheter uh, uses a biphasic pulse strain. How uh, can we uh, manage and uh, can we change uh, uh, the effect of electro operation? This slide uh, shows one of our experimental, um, you know, data uh, on a, a vegetable uh, model of uh, electro operation. So, in, in, you know, practically the PFA lesion were found to be strongly dependent uh, on the voltage setting, and uh, you can easily appreciate the uh, linear relation association between uh, the voltage depth and the voltage and the, the maximum lesion depth. Um, there's a, a linear association as well as the maximum lesion depth uh, concerning the number of cycles that you can apply in order just to have uh, uh, the uh, best lesion that you like just to uh, uh, get. Uh, if you translate into clinical practice, uh, all the companies uh, have come up uh, with, you know, uh, different protocols uh, as to uh, create uh, a durable lesion. And here you have uh, the lesion death uh, in relation uh, with the voltage and uh, in relation uh, to uh, the number of cycles. We have just, you know, seen during the live case 
that the number of applications uh, for uh, uh, each vein is, uh, you know, in relation to the configuration. You have uh, eight applications or uh, configuration. And, you know, this is, you know, what has been, you know, uh, proposed uh, uh, from, the, uh, from the company and recommended in order to have the good lesion. So uh, let's move to uh, the uh, technology that we have uh, at disposal uh, right now. I, I will start with the Farapals because uh, uh, we have experience uh, right now with the Farapals. This is the only um, PFA technology available uh, in, uh, in Italy. And uh, I will start though with a, just a clinical case, just to show you how it's possible to uh, manage uh, even uh, difficult cases uh, uh, with the uh, PFA, not only for a PV isolation, but also uh, for the liposteroid wall uh, uh, isolation. This is something that uh, I uh, uh, take care of the most because uh, I do really think that the um, advantage of having uh, electroporation is uh, also the fact that you can treat a patient with a persistent or long-lasting persistent uh, atrial fibrillation. This is a 74 years old male uh, with uh, uh, several uh, cardiovascular uh, disease risk factors, uh, histories of uh, atrial fibrillation since 2020. Uh, also, uh, he had uh, three previous uh, ineffective uh, electrical cardioversion Obviously, uh, many of these patients already had uh, a different and several uh, anti-rhythm, uh, you know, uh, treatment attempts. Uh, at that time, uh, he was an uh, amildarone, edoxaban, and uh, all the other stuff. So, just to summarize uh, and just to remind us, the number of uh, uh, PFA pulses is eight for each pulmonary vein, and this is what is recommended. And then you have the liberty. Uh, to, you know, apply as many, you know, uh, application as uh, you deem to be, uh, you know, uh, required uh, to completely uh, isolate the posterior wall. In this case, uh, we apply 26 uh, uh, application at the light posterior wall with an overall procedure time of 100 minutes. Uh, it took 15 minutes to isolate the pulmonary veins uh, and uh, nine minutes for the isolation of the posterior wall with fluoroscopy time of 25.5 minutes. And also we use uh, a high density uh, mapping just to make sure that we uh, had our uh, uh, result. The slide shows just, you know, briefly the two configuration of the uh, Farapal's catheter the basket and uh, uh, down here uh, the uh, flower shape as we have seen during the live case. And the right end of the slide you have the uh, complete disappearance of electrical activity at the pulmonary veins. But I think that uh, we added more. And I think this is really uh, a nice example how uh, the PFA can be transmural. Let me just guide you uh, through uh, these uh, two um, uh, mapping pictures. At the left end, uh, you have the post ablation endocardial mapping. That means that we provide uh, the uh, complete isolation of the four pulmonary veins and uh, the left posterior wall. So there's a gray, so there's no electrical activity at all. If you uh, go to the right side, you have the post ablation epicardial mapping. Okay, let me just tell you. We decide just to, uh, for uh, this uh, specific case for investigational purposes, to do a concomitant endo and epicardial mapping. And uh, what we had gotten, uh, the epicardial mapping is almost the same of the endocardial. So that means that we were able to uh, abolish as you know, demonstrated here at the right end of the slide with the intracardial recording, the complete disappearance of uh, atrial activity, even at the epicardial site. So suggesting uh, that the PFA can be really transmural, uh, even if uh, you do uh, the endocardial lesion. So when performing uh, the posterior wall ablation, the lesion transmurality 
might depend on the specific energy uh, source employed. You cannot reach the same result if you apply RF on the posterior wall. And uh, we, we have learned in the uh, previous uh, uh, presentation uh, the concept of you know, doing linear lesions at the posterior wall in redo procedure in patient with a persistent AF ablation. But I do really believe that the PFA is uh, the real revolution in our uh, field because probably uh, can it improve uh, the success rate uh, even in patients uh, with a persistent uh, atrial fibrillation. What about the upcoming uh, PFA technologies? Uh, we have just you know, briefly uh, some of the uh, technologies uh, right now available. This is the Metronic Ethereum, uh, which you know, uh, is uh, a sphere of nine millimeter catheter. And the nice thing that uh, you know, it provides the switching between uh, RF and uh, uh, the uh, PFA. In red, you have the RF lesion. In uh, green, the PF lesion. The authors have provided complete isolation of the uh, pulmonary veins uh, by applying PFA at the posterior wall, just because it's safer. And they switch uh, to uh, RF at the anterior. This is just one way you know, to apply uh, the PFA. Uh, my comment is, well, if you have uh, PFA, why not use PFA everywhere? Just because it's safer and uh, you might you know, get uh, the same result with an effective lesion. But this is something that uh, you can use because there are some anatomy locations where PFA can be harmful, like the mitral isthmus and the CTI, as we have learned uh, from, you know, uh, the uh, live cases. And then if you consider to use PFA uh, to do a mitral isthmus line, probably you need just to do you know, nitrates uh, some minutes before you apply PFA. And here you have um, the slide showing uh, really a nice information. Uh, look at the bar graphic over here. The PVI durability is strictly related uh, to the number of pulses uh, that you apply. If you look at, you know, if you do just a one pulse, uh, you have a very high you know, a uh, rate uh, of uh, recurrences uh, of a uh, connection between the pulmonary veins and the left atrium. But as you go up, if you ramp up uh, the number of pulses, uh, you uh, actually uh, reach a, a very high success rate in, in terms of a PVI durability uh, per vein and per patient. And here are the um, data concerning uh, uh, the outcome, the clinical outcome, without any major differences between the persistent and the, and the um, um, paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. Medtronic is coming up with um, another catheter. This is an old friend, this is a, the PVAC catheter. Um, this is probably designed just for PVI. Even, even here, we have an example of you know, using the same catheter for the posterior wall. I'm a little bit concerned, personally, because uh, you don't have a really a complete circular catheter, and uh, you might leave you know, some gas behind uh, during application, but what, you know, let's see uh, the clinical data, and then uh, you know, the biosense valley pulse, I uh, will have the chance to use uh, briefly, and uh, in the upcoming you know, uh, month, and again, uh, they are, you know, uh, use the same uh, old NMAR catheter uh, to uh, apply in uh, uniporal mode uh, the uh, PFA. Uh, the first clinical data um, suggests that uh, you uh, have a very good, you know, result in terms of uh, clinical outcome and freedom from uh, atrial arrhythmias. Uh, uh, during a midterm uh, uh, follow-up, um, let's see if this catheter can be also used uh, in the um, you know posterior wall. And I will you know uh, end up with the uh, Abbott wall, a PFA system. As you can appreciate, is like you know a basket catheter, you know that you go around uh, uh, using uh, for PVI. And I think this could be a good catheter for uh, 
you know, uh, isolate the posterior wall as well. And you know, I think there's something that probably it will be available uh, next year. So I think that uh, the field of AF ablation seems to be moving really uh, very, uh, you know, at a higher speed. And this, uh, as I mentioned before, I think this uh, is a real, you know, uh, revolution in our, in our field. But I think that I and I will, you know, move to uh, the, the third statement that ablation of, you know, uh, targets beyond uh, the well-known drivers, so AF, that's the pulmonary veins, uh, is probably the next step, and I think that PFA uh, probably uh, will be really helpful uh, in uh, uh, modifying the next ablation strategies uh, that can be applied for any individual uh, suffering from uh, uh, AF patient, paroxysmal or, or persistent. And I think this probably we'll see uh, pretty soon uh, with all the technologies that will be available. I will stop here. I don't want, if you want me just to, uh, you know, uh, present the other lecture because it's, you know, really, or we, yeah. we can't yeah, stop we'll, here. We'll proceed for the next lecture for the sake so, of time. And, we'll and, take, and then we we'll take time questions. And, okay, thanks.